This is ABC 15 Mornings. A final farewell. Loved ones gathering to say their goodbyes to a Valley officer who died from COVID-19. Private funeral happening today. Plus, President Donald Trump's term is now wrapping up. This, his final weekend in office. What we know about his last days coming up. Also, a friendly game of catch uniting strangers in one neighborhood. Their bond all beginning with a wife's social media post. This is a story you really just got to hear this morning, and we're positive that it's going to put a smile on your face. It's the power of community and coming together at its finest. Six o'clock on this Sunday. You're watching ABC 15 Mornings, and I'm Nohe Lonnie Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson. And uh, Nohe, I've got a question for you. I was discussing this with our evening anchor yesterday, Danielle Lerner. Not that I've ever had the desire to really attend one, but are baby showers just for women? <laughs> I think it all <laughs> depends on personal preference, basically. My uh, family came together <laughs> yesterday, so my husband was there. Some of my boy cousins were there. I've got a really close friend who's a guy. So, I mean, these days it's what you make it, you know? So it really is okay. It's all well, about just, I just supporting I just want to wish you and Greg... <laughs> Uh, publicly, I'm very excited for both of you and I want to wish you well through the entire process, just in case I don't happen to hop, hop on a virtual <laughs> shower a little bit later. I've got to hold things down in the newsroom. Absolutely. So I, well. I understand and we appreciate <laughs> those well wishes from you and also our viewers have been so lovely and welcoming and supportive. Yeah. So I really thank all of you. Thank you so much. We are on the countdown and in the meantime, I am glad to have much more comfortable weather for this second half of the pregnancy. Let me tell you, Desert Doppler showing us right now clouds and radar from the last six hours. We did have some clouds yesterday yesterday evening in the overnight hours, but they are streaming out of our state and leaving us with clear conditions, which also means that our temperatures are starting to get a little cooler now at this hour. More 40s showing up on the board. So if you're going out for that early morning bike ride, make sure you've got a good long sleeve on a nice jacket because it's going to be cold for a while, but we will work our way into the 70s. I'll show you just how warm we'll get today coming up in just minutes. But first at this hour, we want to work to get some details for you on this breaking news situation that we've been following. Police are at the scene of a shooting near 24th Street and University. You're looking at video from the scene. You can see there is a huge police presence out there right now. Phoenix Fire just confirming that their crew is in fact treating multiple shooting victims. We don't have a lot of other details being offered at this time, but we do have a crew on scene. And as soon as we do get more information, we will bring those updates to you. All right, and happening today, a private funeral service for the late Chandler police officer, Tyler Britt. He passed away from COVID-19 complications on Monday. Now, Britt's family and friends describing him as a model officer dedicated to serving his community. The chief of police, Sean Duggan, says that Officer Britt made a difference every day that he came to work. He went on to say that his passing is a tremendous loss to the entire department. Chandler Police will escort Officer Britt's family today, and we're told that he will receive full police honors, and he will truly be missed. Now more to, uh, on the fight of COVID-19. As of Saturday, the state of Arizona has administered more than 263,000 COVID-19 vaccines. Let's uh, look at more of the numbers here in just over two hours. We'll get uh, some updated COVID-19 case numbers. Uh, more than 8,000 new cases were reported on Saturday, bringing our state's total to nearly 670,000. Sadly, 208 new deaths were linked to COVID-19. Our state's death toll now more than 11,000 those lives lost to the virus. The Navajo Nation also releasing some new coronavirus figures, 189 new cases there and seven new deaths reported. As of Saturday, the death toll just on the Navajo Nation is 915 people. The total number of COVID-19 cases now more than 26,000. We want to get to some other developing stories here in the Valley. Tempe police confirming that a motorcycle rider was killed last night in a crash. We're told it happened near Curry Road and College Avenue. It's still not clear what led up to that crash, but police do not believe or that any other vehicles were involved. 
All right, we turn now to the transition of power, and it's the final days in office for the Trump administration and the farewells. They are already starting to come pouring in. Vice President Mike Pence and his wife Karen traveling to Lemoor, California on Saturday. Pence delivered a 20-minute speech to military personnel there highlighting things that the Trump administration has done for the military. He also thanked the sailors for their service and for letting him serve the country as well. So thank you for the privilege of being with you today. And as my time in office draws to a close, allow me to thank you for the privilege of serving as your vice president these past four years. It's been the greatest honor of my life. Vice President Pence says that he will attend the inauguration on Wednesday. And when Kamala Harris steps into her new role as vice president, she will pay tribute to past and present trailblazers. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor will oversee the swearing in ceremony. Sotomayor is the first Hispanic Supreme Court justice and the third woman to serve on the bench. Harris will also use a Bible that belonged to Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, who was the first African-American Supreme Court justice. Harris calls him a childhood hero and an inspiration for her legal career. On his first day in office, President-elect Joe Biden is expected to sign about a dozen executive orders. His staff says many of them will fulfill campaign promises. Among them, Biden will sign an order to have the U.S. rejoin the Paris Climate Accord. Another order will rescind the travel ban against predominantly Muslim countries. Biden also intends to halt evictions and student loan payments and also mandate wearing of masks on federal properties. Now, when it comes to legislation, President-elect Biden does plan on sending a $1.9 trillion pandemic relief proposal to Congress, which would include another round of stimulus payments for Americans. Meantime, President Donald Trump's final weekend in office is coming to a close here. The president has no public events scheduled for today. We know that more moving vans also arrived at the White House on Saturday. President Trump will not attend President-elect Biden's inauguration on Wednesday. Instead, he's going to fly to his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. President Trump's departure to Florida is also going to happen just before the inauguration ceremony. According to reports, a farewell ceremony will be held for him at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. Details haven't been announced publicly, but some sources are saying that it could include a color guard and 21 gun salute. President Trump will become the first president since 1869 to miss the inauguration of his successor. ABC 15 will be your home for all inauguration coverage. You can begin seeing live coverage Wednesday at 430 on ABC 15 mornings. It will continue throughout the day with the ABC News national team taking over live coverage from Washington, D.C. at 7 o'clock. I want to switch gears a little bit here now. Uh, fostering a child, it's a gift that so many in the community are willing to give. Now, usually it's teachers who uh, spot signs of abuse and are the first ones to report it to child services. But during this pandemic, taking in a child has been even more difficult than usual. Absolutely. Right now, 14,000 kids are in the foster care system in Arizona alone. So our Carla Navarrete introducing us to one foster mom who's making a difference for a six-year-old girl. Well, just three days after receiving her foster care license, Lisa Hall got the call that she was needed. A six-year-old girl was headed to live with her and her son, Liam, and she says the experience of fostering is life-changing. Lisa Hall and her son Liam knew they had love to give and a home to share. So in November, they welcomed a little girl into their home. The next morning, the first thing she says to me when she woke up is, that was the best sleep I ever had in my life. Without giving specifics, we know the girl who we will name Eve had been neglected. You know, she'd sit at work all day in a fast food restaurant with her mom and sit in the corner and just, you know, watch adults working and do whatever she did to keep busy. It's sad that she she hasn't been afforded the opportunity to just be a child. During our interview, it's evident Lisa and Liam are all in helping the little girl to have some normalcy in her life in order to achieve. I am here to help her win and we need to be the team that helps her Win. Since coming to Lisa, behavioral issues for Eve have lessened and school performance has increased. I think I think she's doing great with this program. I think it's, it's the kind of 
program that she needed to allow her, you know, to excel, right? And to allow her capabilities to really take center stage versus her behavior. Lisa says she's unsure how long Eve will stay, but she adds her goal is not necessarily to adopt, but to help Eve's mom learn how to parent so that Eve can one day be reunited with her mom. Well, ideally what I would love to see is mom to eventually come around and say, you know what, she doesn't have to say it to me, but just have an appreciation for the experience that I afforded her child and the presence that I am and could be in her life even beyond fostering. The Arizona Department of Child Safety tells us the number one reason why children are removed from their home is due to negligence. Now, they also tell us that the hotline where people call in to report abuse, the calls have dwindled over the pandemic due to the fact that the children are not in school and also not as visible in the community. If you would like to foster, we have a link on our website at abc15.com. For now reporting in the East Valley, I'm Carla Navarrete, ABC 15, Arizona. And it does take a special person to be a foster parent. Carla, thank you so much. Still to come, taking action in our Valley community. The Phoenix-based group looking to ban menthol sales and improve health within the African-American community. Stay with us, Arizona. As we look ahead to the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we are reminded of his fight for equality and we look for ways to continue that work. And one major point of inequality today is our healthcare system. Joining us this morning is Lawrence Robinson. He's an education advocate with Flavors Hook Kids Phoenix. Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you are focusing on trying to get to a root problem that often forces the American African American community to seek medical help, and that's smoking. Let's dive into that a little bit. What's the problem? Well, I mean, the problem is really the connection between tobacco and the African American community that goes back to the founding of this nation. And in fact, even before the founding of our nation, um, folks were brought here of African descent um, to farm tobacco, right? It was tobacco and cotton. And as we know, just like if you were a um, Irish worker working in, you know, a, a coal mine, you know, who had to buy from the company store, the tobacco was prevalent, um, available, and it was an easy sell to folks who were right um, in, in the uh, presence of it. And so, you know, the tobacco farmers, the company, the industry have always made money by those who are in proximity to it. And they've marketed to communities they felt um, had a propensity to want to smoke. Not to mention, I know the CDC says that 14% of black adults smoke, and that is higher than their white counterparts. But also then when it circles back to the healthcare system, it contributes, smoking contributes to those top three leading causes of deaths for African Americans. Exactly. The top three leading causes of deaths for African Americans involve cigarettes or tobacco. I think that the average person picks up a cigarette to, I, I hate the term, but to self-medicate. And so when you don't have access to high quality health care, which is, you know, a higher percentage of African Americans don't, um, and you need to obviously um, self-medicate in these ways, people pick up cigarettes. Anyone does. Um, the problem is, is that African Americans live in a higher um, density right? Uh, Multi-generational uh, families in one home, um, higher number of people in one home, and that air quality is shared. We also live in urban areas primarily, which have higher rates of asthma and other respiratory issues. So tobacco compounds that. And we're seeing that with COVID right now. Exactly. We've done several stories here about uh, one that death rates as a result of COVID are higher among Black Americans and because of their access. And you're also saying that your organization finds a direct link to increasing your risk because of smoking when it comes to COVID-19. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we all need to have the strongest lungs, the strongest health possible. And when you aren't um, you know, smoking, your lungs are able to be at maximum capacity. But African-Americans, even who don't smoke, obviously, as I just said, have a higher rate of asthma, um, higher rates of pollution in their neighborhoods um, and so forth. And so if you've got smoking thrown into the mix, you're going to see a high rate of African-Americans and other folks of color um, having COVID related issues. That's one thing to identify a problem. It's another to have an action plan. And so your organization is working to ban the sale of menthol cigarettes. Eighty five percent of African-Americans, I believe the last study I saw, smoke menthol cigarettes. So that's not by any other predisposition, 
but for the industry trying to hook African-Americans. And other demographics suffer from these correlations as well. You know, the LGBT community has marketed um, tobacco toward it. Um, young men, uh, you know, who may not be African-American, Marlboro and the Marlboro man, right? So the tobacco industry is very insidious and, and very smart with how they hook people. And we're just asking that all these flavors that particularly are geared toward kids being hooked be banned in the, from sale in the city of Phoenix. So what do we need to do to make that happen? Where are you in the process and what can people do to join the fight? Um, if people are in support of this ban, they need to pick up the phone and call their Phoenix City Council member. Um, so you call, say you support it, and then um, visit our website and, and we'll put you in touch with more, more activities. And, and what you'll be able to do there is see all of the activities we're having on a neighborhood level. Um, because moms are, are involved in this, um, school teachers, a number of school boards have passed resolutions um, in support of this ban. Um, so there are so many different ways for people to get involved. I'm hesitant to just say one. Understandable. But Lawrence, we thank you so much for your time and really for helping to highlight this issue that a lot of people may not even be aware of, but it's time to pay attention. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Yeah, great information there. No, hey, I remember I used to smoke. I didn't smoke menthols, but I was just a slave to that routine and quitting was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do, but I felt immediately more healthy once I did. Great info there. All right, switching gears a little bit now. New this morning, the oldest living Marine has now passed away. We're talking about Dorothy Dot Cole of North Carolina passed away at the age of 107. Her daughter Beth confirming the news, saying that Dot died after suffering a heart attack. She pursued a military career after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Loved ones say that she wanted to use her pilot skills to help her country, but because she was a woman, she was assigned a desk job. In the end, Cole made history for outliving all other Marines. She is survived by her daughter, two grandchildren, and six great grandchildren. No hate. Wow, we have to salute her this morning. What a legacy. And 107, that is amazing. Yeah. Let's switch gears now and talk about that most accurate forecast as we come up on 620 on this Sunday morning. If you were planning on washing the car this weekend, you've got tomorrow off as the holiday. I'm going to give you the green light, but I'm also going to let you know that you could be doing a little bit of a rain dance if you get that car washed. Green light today and tomorrow, but then on Tuesday, you probably want to avoid it because we are tracking some rain chances that will linger into Wednesday. So we give you that yellow light for that one. Our rain chances continue through Thursday as well, and then they back off on Friday and we still have lingering rain chances on Saturdays. We head into next weekend. We are talking about scattered showers potentially. So here's what we're looking at for today. Future cast showing us any clouds that we saw yesterday going to stream out of our state. We're going to have Happy. clear sunny skies across Arizona today. So our temperatures are going to be just a little warmer. Once again, our breezes will stay calm across northern Arizona and here in the valley, but the Bullhead City and Upper Colorado River Valley area still going to see some gusty conditions with sustained winds around 25 miles an hour. Because of those clearing skies, our temperatures are colder this morning than they were yesterday, at least in the high country. Single digits back on the board at the Grand Canyon, teens in Flagstaff, Window Rock, Sholo, even Heber dipping below 20 degrees. Now we're in the low 40s in Payson, as well as Quartzsite, Gila Bend, and Tucson. Even Safford is below that freezing mark this morning. I did think we'd see some 30s start to show up on the board here. And in fact, we have as we've gotten closer to that sunrise time. Levine down to 39 now, upper 30s in Gilbert and Queen Creek. We're still in the 40s down in Maricopa and also in Peoria and Surprise. So if you're heading out early, trying to get your exercise in or you got to take the dog out, you are going to need a good jacket because it is crisp out there. And we're going to continue to feel that cooler air through those mid morning hours. We'll work our way into the 50s for a brief time between about 9 and 10 o'clock. And then just before lunchtime, we're back into the 60s and we will reach the 70s again today. 76 is that official forecast high, give or take a degree or two, depending on where you are in the valley. More mid to upper 70s to our south and west, mid 60s across the central portion of our state and northern Arizona, a little more mild today in the upper 50s. Here in the valley, we continue to trend down as we head into our holiday tomorrow, low 70s, and then the 60s return on Tuesday with those rain chances here in the valley. We're looking at a 60% chance right now with snow chances coming to the high country, and we're 
are going to stay pretty cloudy for much of the week here. So we'll talk more about this storm system coming in and when we could expect more rain and snow in that full most accurate forecast in just a little bit. All right, 622 on your Sunday morning, still ahead on ABC 15 mornings. He may be young, but one little boy isn't holding back. Uh, here are his tough questions for NASA astronauts. That's coming up. Let's get you some good news on this Sunday morning. When a young ape needed a mother figure, dad stepped right up. Also, did you dream of going to space when you were a kid? A boy from Canada does, and he even got to experience a Zoom meeting that, quite frankly, was out of this world. Reed Binion has those stories in Take a Look at This. How does it feel to be on the first operational flight of the first spacecraft to use a reusable liquid fuel abort system? And what advice would you give to children like me? Yeah, that Thank you for that question. If that seems like a pretty advanced question, that's because Yafet Yosef is no ordinary kid. This eight-year-old boy dreams of one day going to space. So when California's Polytech State University and the National Society of Black Engineers heard about him, they decided to set up a very long distance Zoom call. 400 or to 420 kilometers. Yosef says his dream is to one day explore space as the first black Canadian astronaut. When tragedy struck at the Denver Zoo, Barani, the male Sumatran orangutan, stepped up to the plate. Two-year-old Chera's mother died unexpectedly last month, leaving Barani as a single dad. And the giant ape did something not normally seen in nature. He became Mr. Mom. It's incredible to see. It's this giant male with this tiny little baby. Do you want to build a snowman? <clears throat> How about a 15-foot tall one? The Peters family in Iowa built this ice beast piece by piece on their front lawn. I'm going to go with the obvious and call this guy Olaf. For Take a Look at This, I'm Reed Binion. All right, well, still to come, neighbors bonding over baseball, and it's bringing out people of all ages and backgrounds. That's coming up.